Stop the presses and get me rewrite. I mean, I don't understand why this is not the top news in the financial press this morning with regard at least to Tesla. Um, it is not showing up anywhere, and I just can't quite figure out why. But it is the number one news this morning, and Tesla is actually falling, and Tesla should be going up dramatically because of it. So what's the news? Well, this is according to Sawyer Merritt. NVIDIA CEO Jensen Huang told Yahoo Finance today, Tesla is far ahead in self-driving cars. Every single car someday will have to have autonomous capability. Now, why do I say this should be the top news headline? Well, if Kathy Wood said this, Kathy Wood's been saying it forever and ever, and you know she has certain credibility issues right now because her stocks are way, way down. Uh, if Elon Musk said it, well, you know, he's obviously biased about his own company. Um, even uh, you know, some other folks out there that have been saying it for, for years would be considered to just be fanboys. No, this is Jensen Huang. Jensen has the inside knowledge. He is meeting with the competitors to Tesla, probably 100% of them. He knows where they are. He knows how they're progressing. He may, not only the U.S. competitors, but probably some or maybe all of the Chinese competitors probably have meetings with the folks at uh, at uh, NVIDIA. So who knows better who's ahead on the autonomous driving front and who would know better that the most important, by far embodied AI is going to be autonomous driving. Every car, every single car, he says. So headline number one, uh, Tesla is far ahead of every other car maker in self-driving cars. Headline number two, every single car someday will have autonomous capability. And these already these are not showing up anywhere. And Tesla's actually down so far in the market this morning. We'll check out the price later and we'll find out whether anybody else picks up this headline. But I I'm I'm just so confused about it. Um let's marry that to this news. So this is I, this was going to be my headline. This was going to be my thumbnail. I, fe I felt like even making it a separate, uh, a separate video so that I could get the benefit of getting both headlines. Now listen to this. Also from Sawyer Merritt, Tesla has released new autopilot safety data showing record safety. Uh, let me let me let me uh, let me put the headline on this. Tesla automatic automated driving is now eleven times safer than the regular auto, than a normal automobile, than the average automobile out there. S significantly like six times safer than its own vehicles when they don't have autonomous driving. In quarter one, 2024, Tesla recorded one crash for every 7.63 million miles driven in which drivers were using autopilot technology, a new safety record and a 16% improvement over the previous all time best. For drivers who are not using autopilot technology, Tesla recorded one crash for every 955,000 miles. So you, if you drive a Tesla, you're going to get a, a, in a crash once every million miles. Now that counts all the crashes that are caused by the other guys. Okay, this is not crashes caused by Tesla drivers. This is not ca crashes caused by autonomous driving capability. This is not, a, 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 this is 100% all of the crashes caused for all purposes, for all reasons, just like accidents, people doing things uh, that are negligent to the Tesla driver, one, basically one in a million miles. Okay, then if you add automated driving of any kind to the Tesla vehicle, then you get to 7.63 million miles. Uh, most of you are not going to drive that many miles in a lifetime. In your, so therefore, in a lifetime, you're never going to have a single crash if you drive your Tesla. Uh for, for, for the most part, that would be true. Tesla, so then by comparison, the most recent data from NISTA, and I'm always pronouncing that wrong, and not I don't see how there could be a wrong pronunciation, but NHTSA and FHWA, this information comes from 2022, shows that in the US, there was an automobile crash generally over all brands of every 670,000 miles. So we go from seven, 670,000 miles to 7.63 million miles or 11 times better. Well, that should be a headline. Where is that headline and why is Tesla down this morning? So let me get it straight here. 
the guy who should know, the number one person who has the information, who has the knowledge, nobody out there is more important right now in AI. Nobody out there has more information about all the competitors that Tesla says that Tesla's far in the lead. And then Tesla puts out their own data showing that they're 11 times better than a regular car when automated driving is, is, is taking place. And that's what, these are not headlines. <laughs> Tesla's going down this morning in stock. Uh, only a buck. Okay, but still, it should be up. Should be up 20. Should be up 50 on th those two headlines combined. All right. Um, then Tesla talk. T-S-L-A-T-A-L-K on uh, X says this. Someone please explain to me. 20 million EVs by 2029 becoming autonomous. Robotaxi launching globally. Optimus Gen 3, 4, and 5 in volume production like tens of millions of units a year. FSD licensing to every OEM, probably. Energy storage at 100 gigawatts uh, uh, per Q. I'm not sure what Q is supposed to be. And this would make Tesla worth $7 trillion. Now, I could go on and on. He's not even talking about Dojo. He's not even talking, you know, uh, there's so many more things. He, he, semi uh, insurance. He's not to, there's so many other things that could be on this list. But Elon Musk responded to this list. Are you ready? Here we go. Possible, but extremely difficult. <laughs> now again now elon's biased and he's an optimist but he looked at that list and he said this is possible but extremely difficult and the stock is down a buck okay i know i've been quoting a lot of sawyer merritt this morning but the today happens to be a day when sawyer merritt had a lot of stuff first uh update after removing all the job postings in north america one month ago tesla has just posted new job listings what 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 category would you think maybe there will be new job listings? Oh, autopilot and robotics. <laughs> oh, 100% of the new job listings are in autopilot and robotics category. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what to say. I'm kind of excited this morning. Did you notice? All right. Elon Musk says, oh, I'm sorry, this is Elon Musk ADO. I'm not sure what the ADO stands for. But anyway, that's where you can find this person on X. Uh, responding to, uh, should X make an iPhone? Would you buy the X phone and ditch an iPhone? Be honest, you entirely own your own data, completely private and 100% secure, free Starlink, free X premium, and vote yes or no. Uh, so would you, would you, if if uh, Tesla, if, I'm um, sorry, if, if X.com or X.ai were making a phone, would you switch? Um, of course, obviously, I would say that would depend on what its capabilities were. Um, all right. This is Randy Kirk, by the way. If you haven't, did you like any of that? Then hit the like button. Just take a second. Please do that. Please hit the like button. And then subscribe. That would really be nice. Hit the notify button because, you know, we've got what's probably going to happen today. I think it's probably going to be Brian White today and Scott Walker tomorrow. Uh, we've got... Uh, um, uh, uh, yeah, you know, all the regular guys. So hit the like button, hit subscribe, notify, and then join Patreon if you'd like to support news reporting like this. Anyway, uh, let's go on. We've got JP Morgan. This is according to CNBC. This is important. This is critical. Please listen. JP Morgan Chase's chairman and CEO Jamie Dimon says the U.S. economy could see a hard landing. Now, I know I've talked about Jamie Dimon a couple of times during the last week being a bit negative, okay? And he keeps talking about what could happen. But this is different. This is, I think this is a slightly different take that you should listen to. When asked by CNBC's Sri Jakarja about the prospect of a hard landing, Diamond said, could we actually see one? Of course. How could anyone who reads history say there's no chance? The CEO was speaking at the JP Morgan Global China Summit in Shanghai. Diamond said the worst outcome for the U.S. economy would be stagflation. This is why I wanted to bring this up. He didn't, no, hard landing. You know what happens with a hard landing. You have a hard landing. Uh, six months later, nine months later, you're back starting again, and you've wiped out a bunch of folks that shouldn't be in business. And you've got a bunch of folks that have, have changed jobs, gotten into smarter jobs, 
or they will get into smarter or better jobs. They've been taken out of positions that they shouldn't have been in. You get this clean wash. You get this white, you get, you get a new start with the economy. And so a hard landing is actually better, according to Jamie Dimon and me, <laughs> like I can compare. Anyway, <laughs> so Jamie, he says, no, stagflation scenario where inflation continues to rise, but growth slows amid high unemployment. He says, I look at the range of outcomes, and again, the worst for all would be stagflation, higher rates, recession. This means corporate profits will go down, and we'll get through all of that. I mean, the world will survive this, but I think the odds have been higher than other people thinks. think. I'm sorry. However, he said, the consumer is still in good shape. Now, this was a surprise to me. <laughs> Nothing right now is telling me the consumer is in great shape. Jamie Dimon is saying that the consumer is still in great shape. Even if the economy slips into recession, he's saying the consumer is in great shape. I am shocked by this, and I'm really concerned about Jamie. Why did he say this? I'd love to hear more about this. He pointed to the unemployment, well, part partly because of this. He pointed to the unemployment rate, which has been below 4% for two years, adding that wages, home prices, and stock prices have been going up. That said, Diamond pointed out that the consumer confidence levels are low, which would tell me they're not in great shape. It seems to be mostly because of inflation. The extra money from COVID has been coming down. It's still there, you know, at the bottom 50%, it's kind of gone. So it's kind of normal, not bad. Oh, okay. So the lower end, the lowest 50% of the consumers have run out of all the money and they're just normal now, except that the prices have gone up and their jobs haven't been keeping pace in terms of income. I don't know. I don't, I, I so Jamie, I, I, I'm quoting you, but half of what you said makes total sense to me. The other half, I'm just confused how the consumer is still fine. Minutes from the Fed meeting released Wednesday showed that poly policymakers have grown more concerned about inflation, with members of the Federal Open Committee indicating they lack confidence to ease monetary poly policy and cut rates. Timing of the Fed cuts. Diamond said interest rates could still go up a little bit. Are you listening? I think inflation is stickier than most people think. I think the odds are higher than other people think, mostly because the huge amount of fiscal monetary stimulus is still in the system and still maybe driving some of this liquidity. Is the world prepared for higher inflation? Not really. According to the CME FedWatch tool, about half of traders polled are pricing in a 25 basis point cut by September. The Fed has predicted three quarter percentage cuts through 2024, but only if the market allows. That is not going to happen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, uh, asked about the prospect and timing of the rate cuts. Diamond said that while, mar while market expectations are pretty good, they're not always right. The world said inflation was going to stay at 2% all that time. Then it says it will go to 6%. Then it said it's going to go to 4 It's been 100% wrong almost every single time. Why do you think this time is right? JP Morgan uses the implied curve. To estimate interest rates, he said, I know it's going to be wrong. So just because it says X doesn't mean it's right, it's always wrong. You go back to any inflection point of the economy ever, and people thought X, and then they were dead wrong two, two years later, he said. Um, okay, so uh, my reading of all of that is, uh, we have a really good chance of stagflation. I am not seeing any real evidence that inflation is going to go down from here. It is going to be flat from here, in my personal opinion. Uh, everything tells me it's going to be flat, and everything tells me the consumer has run out of money, especially the bottom 50%, as he points out. And we're seeing it across the board in terms of fast food restaurants, et cetera. I'm not going to go into the details. Barron's says this this morning. All right, I, pr I promised you I would find something on natural gas. It finally showed up, and here it is. What's happening with natural gas? Because that's been crazy. Natural gas is used, the reason it's gone up, I think it's gone up, uh, what, did they, what did we say the other day? From a buck 57 to like $2.70, or I think this morning it's even higher. Natural gas is used for home heating, electricity generation, and industrial and agricultural production. The heating market is substantial. It's also used for plastics and for other things. Okay, and uh, the heating market is substantial, so natural gas prices are impacted by weather. This last winter was particularly warm in much of the world, including the U.S. People didn't need as much natural gas, and excess gas began to pile up in the inventories, so the oversupply caused prices to crash. 
On March 26th, they hit their lowest level since the depths of the pandemic in 2020, dropping to, what did I say, $1.57 uh, per British thermal unit. Since then, several natural gas producers have curbed production to reduce the oversupply. Their efforts are working, leading to less natural gas being produced and the oversupply diminishing. Also, some liquefied natural gas plants that have been down for maintenance are back up and running, increasing the amount of natural gas being exported. On Wednesday, prices settled at $2.84, up from $1.57. And, They've risen in five of the past six trading sessions. I believe, again, they're up again this morning. Among the companies that pulled back their production are Chesapeake Energy and EQT. Their stocks, like other natural gas producer stocks, have performed well despite the volatile prices. Well, they should be doing incredible right now, based on the prices being up this much. Natural gas may also be he headed back to higher demand in the years ahead for electricity generation, which is expected to rise as more data centers get run to build artificial intelligence programs. You got that one third right. Why wouldn't the writer on this know that it's, yes, data centers are big, but what about crypto mining? What about electrification? Well, he said electrification, but really electrification, okay. Uh, this is from Trueflation this morning. This is uh, nothing to do with their normal stuff. It says, media is upset that the average American believes the country's in a recession. The Harris Bowl conducted by a UK tabloid, The Guardian, concluded 55% of people in the United States believe the economy is shrinking. 56% think the U.S. is expect already experiencing a recession. 49% believe the S&P stock market index is down for the year, though the index is, is went up more than 12% this year. 49% believe unemployment is at a 50-year high, and 72% think inflation is increasing. All right, so number one, if this is a good poll, depending on who they polled and you know uh, how, how they asked the questions, if this is a good poll, it shows that your average consumer out there, your average citizen out there in the United States, is a dummy when it comes to economics. That is no shock to me, okay? But it also gives evidence over and above the consumer confidence polling that's being done that people are not experiencing good economic times right now. They are worried, they are nervous, they're seeing inflation. What, where, where, where do you think they're making their decisions about the economy? They're going into the grocery store, they're going to the gas pump, they're going to the McDonald's, and they're seeing that the prices are off the moon. They're trying to buy a house, they're trying to buy a car, and they can't. They can't because the interest rates are too high for them right now in their current position. They're getting their credit card statement back, and they're not, believe me, they're not even looking at what they're paying in interest. They're just seeing that the monthly payment has gone up. That's what they're seeing. Um, that's what the consumer is seeing right now. And those folks are going to start pulling back. They already have started pulling back because they don't have it anymore. It is gone. That's my, that's my opinion. The Cobasi letter this morning, only 64% of U.S. parents said that they were doing at least okay financially in 2023, the lowest level on record. This is down from 69% in 2022 and 75% in 2021, according to a Fed survey released Tuesday. Among them, just 56 could cover a 56% could cover a $400 emergency expense using cash, savings, or a credit card paid off with the next statement, down from 64%. 56 compared to 64% in 2021. Overall, 72% of all adults surveyed were doing all right financially in 2023, the lowest share since 2016, and down from 78% just two years ago. Yet another massive disconnect between the consumer sentiment and the economic data. Um, okay, uh, listen, this is Randy Kirk. Um, um, oh yeah, we got to look at the numbers. I, I got a little confused there this morning. There's so much news and it's so impactful and it is so clear. And Tesla is down $3.82 on that news. Go figure. I, you know, some days I can figure it out. But the Dow Jones is down 236 right now. NASDAQ is up 8176 because why? Because NVIDIA is up 80 points at 1,029. So it's 100% of the back end NVIDIA because the rest of the Magnificent Seven is down. Meta is down 265. Uh, Apple down $1.71. Google's ba basically at even. So we got the entire NASDAQ up 
because of NVIDIA being up basically 7% this morning compared to yesterday. We have got NASDAQ, uh, I'm sorry, S&P basically flat this morning, but why is Tesla down 362? That news is nowhere. The news I gave you at the top of the hour is nowhere. Nobody is talking about what Jensen, Jensen Wang said, and nobody is talking about the safety numbers that just got published. There's not a single headline. You know, I look through all of them before I start this program. Anyway, it's hard to figure. We have got the, the uh, Kathy Woods are all down also this morning. So overall, the market is not doing well this morning. NVIDIA is doing fine and the rest of the market is not. And basically, I think that's what the consumer is seeing. The AI companies, the big tech companies are doing fine. People who work for those companies are doing fine. But the general economy, not so much. Okay, let's take a look. What is the impact on bonds this morning? We have got the 30 year up 3. Point, I'm sorry, the 10 year up 3.3 this morning at 4.467. That is not good news. We have got the two year up 4.4 basis points at 4922. That is expanding again, that inversion almost getting back to 50 basis points. The two month is flat this morning at 5382. That's actually shrinking a little bit to about 90 basis points. So go for, I, again, I give I give up trying to do that, but it, it there's a reason for this and nobody's talking about it. I'm going to start looking for that now, see if I can find anybody else talking about the inversion at this point, which has been going on. I've lost track, something like 21 months. Uh, it's becoming the new normal. If it becomes the new normal, what does that mean? If, you know, literally it could be the new normal and what would that mean? Oil prices up a little bit this morning, 69 cents back to 78.26 on Texas Intermediate. Brent is up the same amount. Natural gas up 1.9% this morning at $2.89. Call it $2.90. Remember, it was a buck 57 a couple of months ago. <laughs> should you inv should we all have invested in natural gas? Holy mackerel. Gold falls again by another 35 bucks this morning. <laughs> so what's this? What's the what, what, what? What's one conclusion? This is not trading advice. This is not investment advice. Gold is falling now another 35 down to 2357. It was at 2400 and something just a couple of days ago. Um, and now you've got natural gas way up here. What would that tell you? It would tell you maybe natural gas is getting ready to have a little bit of a correction because it's gone way out past what it should. This is a natural, normal way to think about all of these things. Um, copper, not so much on copper. because Copper's up again, not much, just 0.04%, but at $4.85 now. Remember, it was at $5 and change the other day. I think that's what happened. It got too far out there, got bought back just a little bit, but the long-term on copper is not like natural gas where it's seasonal and depends on how the weather is doing. Copper is going to continue to go up because there's not enough of it to feed this electrification and the uh, data centers and the Bitcoin miners. Um, all right, we have got the dollar. Uh, yeah, it's not, a, not a lot of movement. The dollar is doing well. Let's put it that way. Uh, we got Bitcoin down 1837 this morning after being well over 70,000 back down to 67 8 74 this morning uh yeah um there you go let me go back let's talk about the stocks once again because I did not give you the percentages so the Dow Jones is down 0.59 Nasdaq up 0.49 S&P 0.04 up Tesla down 2% and as mentioned the rest of the magnificent 7 down all right, um, and uh, Tesla is uh, uh, down $3.74, makes no sense. All right, let's see. Later on this morning, I think I'm going to give you, I think I'm going to give you Brian White, but I've got a Scott Walter ready to go also. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not, and then I've, I've got this, yeah. I'm, yeah, I think it'll be Scott Walter, Brian White tomorrow, okay? <laughs> and then... Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. So we'll see you later today. That's all I got for you right now. It has been great as always talking to you. Bye. <laughs>